36. Which evidence from the excerpt is most relevant to the author's claim that there are many unanswered questions about the relationship between movement and learning? Okay, the relationship between movement and learning is basically the idea of the whole passage, right? Does exercise help you learn the language? So what's the author's claim that there are unanswered questions? And what answer choice here represents that or is relevant to that? So I'm going to look for an answer here, if I understand the question correctly, that highlights or represents unanswered questions in the study. Okay, so E, the method of the study using one type of exercise and people from one age group. Okay, I remember where that occurred. Again, there's no citation here, but they did discuss that down toward the end. Right around paragraph 18, this study involves, so these were the limitations on the study. And again, recognizing that from my reading comprehension, my progression of ideas, I kind of know where to look for this because this will be the limitations on the study. And that's essentially what the question is asking for, what questions remained about this study. So the study involved college students performing relatively light exercise, though, and cannot tell us whether other people completing other types of exercise would achieve the same results. That means there's a limitation. There's an open-ended question. If I didn't choose college-aid students and they weren't riding bikes or doing some other type of exercise, would the results still hold true? Yeah, that actually is the answer to the question. The method of the study using only one type of exercise and people from one age group raises the question of whether or not the study is ultimately correct or has you know, application more generally. So E looks to be a good answer to the question conditions. F, the statement from Dr. Sulpizio explaining past studies on neurochemicals in the brain. Okay, so first of all, the statement is explaining. Explaining is the opposite of unanswered questions, which is the condition of 36. So my guess is this is not going to be correct. Let's just check. So again, I recall that coming in some of the same area. Yes, it also offers no clues about what is occurring inside the brain, paragraph 19. But many past studies have shown that exercise prompts the release of neurochemicals in the brain that increase the number of new brain cells and the connections between neurons, Dr. Silpizio says. So this is an explanation. They don't know in the study why students learned better. But Dr. Sulpizio has an explanation, possibly from previous studies. So that's not raising questions. That's actually answering a question. So F is not correct. That's not an unanswered question. It's explaining or answering a question. G, the finding of the study that exercise helps people recall information over a long period of time. So, okay, the finding that they recall information. So first of all, it's a finding, which means it's probably opposite of an unanswered question. And that was one of the conclusions. It's probably up just before the questions area. Okay, paragraph 15. Perhaps most interesting, the gains in vocabulary and comprehension lingered for most of the cyclists. Longest for the cyclists. Okay, that's a conclusion. That's not a question. Okay, that's not an unanswered question of the study. It's presented as a conclusion. G is not answering the question conditions of 36. H, the statement from Dr. Sulpizio describing how the results of the study can be applied. Well, that's the very end. You know, you can apply it with exercise. It doesn't have to be a bicycle. But any exercise can help you learn the language. So H is not an unanswered question related to the study. So the correct answer here is E. The, the fact that they used one exercise and one group of people is the reason why the study might have some unanswered questions. Does it work for other groups as well in different types of exercise? E is the correct answer for 36.